Hello everyone, this is Elena from We Learn to Share, and in this video, we're going to cover the fourth question from the 2021 AP Statistics exam FRQ. Now, let's read the question. The manager of a large company that sells pet supplies online wants to increase sales by encouraging repeat purchases. The manager believes that if past customers are offered $10 after their next purchase, more than 40% of them will place an order. To investigate that belief, 90 customers who placed an order in the past year are ran selected at random. Each of the selected customers is sent an email with a coupon for $10 off the next purchase if the order is placed within 30 days. Of those who received the coupon, 38 place an order. Question A, is there a convincing statistical evidence that the significance level of alpha equals 0.05 that the manager's belief is called correct? Complete the appropriate inference procedure to support your answer. So this asks us to conduct a hypothesis test or like a, uh, like a significance test, right? So the first step to that would be to state the right statements. What I mean by this is, first of all, you need to define your variable, which, are, which is P today, which stands for the true proportion of all customers who placed an order in the past that would um, place another order or like buy more, like place a repeated purchase order if offered $10 off coupon. And the null hypothesis here would be that P, this proportion, is equal to 0 0.40, like this, 3%, like it's mentioned. And the alternative hypothesis would be the belief, the belief of the manager. So he believes that it is more than 40%. So this would be the alternative hypothesis. Moving on to the second step, you need to define or identify the test you're going to use and check the conditions for it, right? And I think that the most appropriate test for this question would be a one sample z test for for comparing proportions right and there are several um conditions we need to check check for example like if it is a random sample and because it is um actually mentioned in the question that these customers were selected at random this condition is satisfied and also um, we need to check the 10% rule. So whether the population is larger than the 10 times of um, larger than the sample size times 10. And I think it is reasonable to assume that this condition is also met because the sample that we have is considered of 90 customers and uh, the the customers last year would be probably larger than 900 customers and that's pretty reasonable to assume right so i think this condition is also met and lastly the large counts so whether np is larger than 10 and n1 minus p is also larger than 10 we need to check this and the n here is the number of customers or number of, yeah so it's 90 and the probability proportion proportion would be 0. Point, would be this and this if you calculate it it's larger than 10 and also for this 1 minus which is equal to is also larger than 10 so all of the conditions are met moving on to the third part where you actually conduct the test and like get the test test test, test statistic the test statistic would be z equals p hat minus p over roots proportion p over n right and the p hat we have in this question would be the point estimator right so 38 out of 90 which would be equal to 0 0.422 and the p over here we have is 0 0.40 right so if you substitute over here, or if you have a calculator, you could put the numbers in. Let 
Burris, 90, right? Um, then you will have your point for three. And for the p-value, uh, this is your test statistic, right? And the p-value would be 0 0.3336. And now that you get your p-value, you can make a conclusion, right? Um, let me just erase this for real quick for the sake of space. For concluding, um, you can say that because the p-value is much larger or like bigger than the significance level of all pi equals 0 0.05, um, we fail to reject the oil hypothesis. In other words, we do not have convincing statistical evidence that the manager's belief is true. Right, moving on to question B. Based on your conclusion from part A, which of the two errors, type 1 or type two could have been made interpret the consequence of the error in the context so before moving on just quickly reminding the terms so type one error is conducted when you reject a true null hypothesis hypothesis and type two error is conducted when you fail to reject or if you accept a false Null hypothesis. And in this question, I think it is more likely to assume that type 2 error would, could have been occurred, more likely than type 1. And um, when the manager conducted the type 2 error, it would be something like this. So it would be when the manager, manager's strategy or his like plan of giving the ten dollar off coupon to customers in order to what was his purpose his purpose was to yeah encourage repeat purchases or in order to increase sales like this actually worked right so this means that the number of sales actually increased uh, thanks to the manager's wonderful plan. Uh, but the manager failed to find convincing statistical evidence that the um, sales increased more than 40% like he believed that would in the first. And as a, um, as a consequence of this, the consequence of this error would be uh, him abandoning the plan, the strategy, abandoning this strategy, let's say type two error strategy. Why? Because he thinks that it's not effective, right? Because like, yeah, um, because he thinks it is ineffective to increase sales strategy and if he abandons this effective strategy that was actually working then this will therefore uh, 
potential or like possible increases in sales will be lost. Yeah, and this would be the um, the answer for question four. Uh, this is end of the video. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, press the like button and subscribe to our channel.